Welcome to the Pirke Avot podcast, where over the next six months together, we will be learning the Pirke Avot ethics of the fathers. Called such because just like a parent who gives birth to a child doesn't just give them physical life, but they teach them values and ethics and spirituality. So too, a Torah teacher is not someone who just knows Torah, but is someone who truly lives and embodies Torah true values and as such is qualified to teach values and ethics. Before learning Pirkei Avot on Shabbos afternoon, it is customary to start with the following Mishnah. Kol Yisrael yesh lahem chilek le'olam haba. All of Israel has a share in the world to come. That means that any Jew who has not utterly divorced himself from the Jews, the Jewish nation's lofty mission, according to Rav Hirsch, has a share in the world to come. Why do we start with this Mishnah? We're about to embark on a journey of how to live a good life. Lots of advice and lots of information and lots of directives on how to live this good life. But before we do it, we have an assurance that we have a a share in the world to come. This is like a doctor who's seeing a patient and he's about to prescribe a therapy, a course of therapy for his patient. But before he does that, he sits the patient down and he tells him, look, you're going to go through this treatment, but there's hope. You will hopefully recover. This is what this is what will help you. And the same way, before we start Avot, before we start learning how to, to apply this ethics to our lives and how to live a good life, we are assured that we have a share in the world to come. We can do this. Every single Jew has a share in the world to come, and we can grow our share in the world to come. There's another idea here as well. And, and we're given this idea as well when it comes to the detailed laws about keeping kosher. Why so much detail? Is a question that sometimes come up, right? Why does God care how, how, of all these little details? But I'll give you an analogy that explains it. Imagine there's a doctor and he has two patients and he sees both of them and he sees that one of them is ill, but he has a chance to recover. And he sees the other one is also ill. But unfortunately, there's no more hope for that person. So the doctor, when he sees both patients, is going to prescribe a very different path of action. To the one who has a chance to recover, he's going to sit down and he's going to explain to him and give him very detailed laws about this you can do and this you can't do. You can eat this, but stay away from that. Whereas the one who will recover, he's just going to tell him, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your time, but he's not going to bother him with what you can eat or what you can't eat because there's no point. He's, he, he can't recover. He may as well just enjoy the last few, few last bit of life that he has left. So too, this Mishnah is, is reminding us that our soul that we have is eternal. And we have to remember that every action that we have has eternal ramifications and as such we have to take good care of it. So this is a reminder for us before we start learning Pirka Avot that we have to take good care of our soul because it lives on forever. Now we look carefully at the words and it's very interesting and it does it says every Jew has a portion towards the world to come if you read if you translate it literally literally it doesn't say it has a portion in the world to come but it has a portion towards the world to come why does it say that because it's teaching us something very very powerful about the world to come that we have a portion but we create that portion by working towards it. We ourselves are creating our portion in this world to come. We get, we're planted in this world, but everything that we do here gives birth to the consequences in the world to come. An analogy to this of, that, that we, we have is, what is this world to come? If you think about it this way, in this world, we have a brain. And part of the function of the brain is the access of filter, 
right? Because imagine this, imagine if you would see and register everything that was happening in, in the world right now. Stop for a moment and imagine if you would register everything. You, your brain would be overwhelmed. But our brain acts as a filter. Now, part of what that filter does is it gives our own perspective on the world. But when a person comes to the world to come, that filter's gone. And we are faced with the reality of who we are. And people often ask, what is it like? What is the world to come like? What's heaven? What's hell? Now, that's obviously a, a discussion, a massive discussion all on its own. But I want to give you a little snippet of, 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 what, what, it's, of what it's like by telling you a story. So there was um, a woman, her name was Elizabeth, and she had a near-death experience, which meant she was clinically dead, medically dead for a short amount of time. But thankfully, she recovered. And when she recovered, she said that she had an experience, which is very common in people that have near-death experiences, where she had a flashback of her whole entire life up to the point of where she had had the accident and the near-death experience. And she was asked, what was that like for you? And she said, it changed my life forever because I suddenly realized the impact of, our, of my actions. And she gave a little story. She says, a few months before the accident, I was going grocery shopping. And as I was grocery shopping, I was rushing through the day. I was hoping to get to the gym later on. And I hear a little girl crying. And I think, you know, I stop for a minute and I, I see that there's a little four-year-old girl and she's crying. And I stop and I say, what's the matter? And she says, I can't find my mommy. And she's crying. She's hysterical. And she says, okay, come, I'll help you. And she takes her to the customer service. The customer services makes an announcement. And Elizabeth stands with the little girl while, uh, for, for like 30 seconds until the mother comes rushing over. And she thanks the, 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 um, Elizabeth and, and the mother and her, and her little girl are reunited. And she says, at the time when it happened, I went home and I went on with my day. I didn't really think much about it. She says, when I had a near-death experience, I, I re-experienced this this." episode but I experienced it from the impact from from the perspective of the little girl and I felt the fear of a four-year-old girl stranded in a supermarket who thinks I'm never ever going to get reunited with my mom again and I felt the exhilaration of being saved by this stranger who came and helped me get back to my to my mother again and she says, now, after the near-death experience, and now after I had that flashback, I, I never look at, at, at small actions the same way because I realize the impact of the actions. And, and that is what the world to come is like, is when we suddenly are faced with the impact of our actions, right? The small things that we do in this world, we realize how eternal they are and how impactful they are. And that can be painful or pleasurable depending on the choices that we make in this world. And the Mishnah goes on and it says, People are all are righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. They are the stem of my plantings, my handiwork in which to take pride. And the Mishnah here is giving us the analogy for this world, right? If you think about planting, we put seeds in, Right? But it's telling us what, it, what is our pride, the talents, the situation that we are given, those are like the field. Those are not our prides, but it's what we do with that. Only what we cultivate and bring to fruition is a source of pride. So the Mishnah's challenge to us is that now that we know that our actions are eternal, they have consequences that reach out eternally and God has given us all these talents and the situations but our job is to make something that we are proud of so knowing that our actions are eternal what do we want to make of the situation and the talents that God has given us that we can say I am proud of myself from this Looking forward to continuing this journey together. If you have any questions, thoughts, feedback, I'd love to hear from you. All the best.